the uh, Kessig Malcontent side. He's playing two copies of Restoration Angel. Uh, a change I actually like a lot. A change I'm going to make myself on Magic Online in the modern leagues I play in. Yeah, essentially two flex slots in the deck. We see Dire Fleet D D Daredevil sometimes. You see the one Dark Confidant, the one Malcontents. Vile to start here for Hoey. Uh, arguably the best start for humans, assuming you only draw one. Cavender Souls, of course, naming humans for Matthew Hoey. And Jonathan Zachek will play a beautiful island and a vial of his own. And that is an invention. I think that's on my side of the bingo board. I think. There it is. A ding-a-ding. -ding. Catching up. Oh, I'm actually ahead of you now. That feels good. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's going to put his vial to one. He's going to free boot you. Take a look here at Zachek's hand. That spreading seeds is a pretty nice target. You'll also find a Lord of Atlantis, a Meryl Regery, a Harbinger of the Tides, and a very pretty Mutavolt. And... Spreading Seas, I think, is a, it's a critical card in the matchup here for Merfolk. He's likely to be outsized on the battlefield, and one of the easier ways to cheat it is just put Spreading Seas on a land and then manage the race via Island Walk. Going to be tougher to do here as Hoey has a question or two, it appears, on Harbinger of the Tides. He'll be writing down these cards, I believe. Uh, yeah, Zatch's Sect here does not appear to be cheap. Yeah. And it looks like there's a variety of uh, Japanese language cards down there. And Ho just getting some confirmation on what exactly Harbinger of the Tides does. Well, we can take a look here at home. For those of you who don't know what Harbinger of the Tides does, is Hoey will pass the turn back over to Zatchik. He is one of the newer Merfolk, as Vile will go up to one here for Jonathan. Blue, blue, 2-2, two, two, Merfolk Wizard. You may cast Harbinger of the Tides as though it had Flash if you pay two more mana to cast it. When Harbinger of the Tides enters the battlefield, you may return target tapped creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So it can cast four. Sometimes some Merfolk can make it a little bit cheaper. And it's pretty good with Ether Vile. Yes. So there you are. Oh, he's going to put his Vile to two. It's a Vile Mirror here. And we'll see where Hoey wants to go with his third turn of the game. Does have a copy of a Reflector Mage. Looks like Hoey has quite a few lands in hand, though. It looks like an Horizon Canopy and Ancient Ziggurat. And I do see a copy of Meddling Mage. Meddling Mage not going to be nearly as good when the opponent has Aether Vial. Although it gives him some insurance here if something happens to the Freebooter. So it's not the end of the world, because he can still Meddling Mage Spreading Seas and prevent Spreading Seas from going on in one of his lands and enabling a whole lot of Island Walk. Looks like Hoey is considering an attack here for one. And he will make that attack from one in the air. And is that just going to fall down to 19? At least it appears that way. These players maybe with a little bit of a standoff here. Okay, it's going to be Dismember. Well, your play of Meddling Mage on Spreading Seas makes... A lot of sense now, Yep, I would say. Here's an Ancient Ziggurat. This will be a Meddling Mage. We'll get confirmation, but my assumption is the name will be Spreading Seas. Yep. Nothing else. All the, the rest of Zatchik's hand is just creatures, so that's all good through the vial. It's the only thing he can lock out. Spreading Seas is the name. Master of the Pearl Trident of the draw there for Jonathan Zatchek. You see he's got his spreading season in his hand upside down. Players do that nowadays to signal to themselves that the opponent knows that this card is in my hand given that they have seen my hand. Zatchek will simply pass the turn back. No spell to play. No interest in attacking with the Mutavolt. Back to Matthew Ho who will go. He'll pick up a copy of Mantis Rider. Pretty solid draw here for Hoey as... Uh getting through on the ground is going to be problematic soon. Uh, all the interlocking lords are going to be larger than what Hoey has available, certainly larger than the Meddling Mage, so getting in the skies is not the worst. Hoey thinking about using the Vial or casting the Mantis Rider. That is the question. It looks like he will use the Vial to cast the Mantis Rider. Now maybe we will see Thaïs Lieutenant. We're actually just going to see an attack here for three. The follow-up is a Horizon Canopy. That's land four. Hoey will simply pass the turn back. Maybe taking a little bit more of a conservative approach here as Zachek will be violing in a Lord of Atlantis. We'll head back over to Hoey. Excuse me, we'll head back over to Zachek. That was on Hoey's end step. Mutavolt the draw here for Jonathan. 
And Zatrik would really like to have a second source of blue mana here. So he could play a Lord in a turn and also vile one out. Not the worst draw in the Muta Vault because they're going to be so large. And the Regery is nice too as he can cast that naturally. And there is Meryl Regery in combination with Lord of Atlantis. They're both 3-3s. Three of course, the Regery from Lorwyn. Other Merfolk creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever you play a Merfolk spell, doesn't have to resolve. You may tap or untap target permanent. Here comes the old 3-3 three, three Lord of Atlantis. But you do have to play it, so it doesn't interact with the Vile. Correct. Hoey's going to fall down to 17. Hoey is going to bust that Horizon Canopy. He's interested in a new card. He will find one. Time to untap and draw a card. Vile. See if it wants to go up to four. It will stay at three as Holy will draw a card. Picked up a copy of Noble Hierarch, did Matthew. And this is going to be everybody's favorite. Appears to be a Reflector Mage, maybe? It's going to be another copy of Mantis Rider. Even better. Yeah, I would prefer to have uh, the, the Mantis Rider played now in attack because it's, it's a clear shot and have the ability to play Reflector Mage at instant speed. This will be an attack for six in the air. That's going to bring Zatchek down to seven if this goes according to plan and it will and with the Thalia's Lieutenant in play always got uh, a kill lined up next turn with Reflector Mage at instant speed for protection of surviving this turn Master of the Pearl Trine is going to come on through the Vial all of those lords are now four fours you saw Mobile Hierarch via Cavern of Souls naming humans to close out Hoey's turn Mantis Rider, real problematic card here for Merfolk. The skies is where you can beat them. They're normally better than you on the ground, given that the lords pump up all the other lords and all the other Merfolk in general. Yeah, if the, if the battlefield's largely uncontested, now that these, neither of these decks play a whole lot of removal, I think a normal Merfolk draw is going to outsize a normal human's draw. Just the way the lords intersect is better than the way that humans pumps its own threats. But flying is a major vulnerability. You're seeing it on display right now. Yes, you are. This is going to be a Silver Gill Adept revealing Harbinger of the Tides. And you can see from Zashi's perspective here, uh, activating the Regery here and trying to find out some way if he can cobble together lethal. He can't be too confident about surviving next turn. A lot of cards kill him. But I think it's going to be too hard against Hoey's access to instant speed Reflector Mage. He'll untap his own island there with the Marrow Regery trigger. Silver Gill Adept will resolve. He'll draw a card, of course. Will Zatchik? And it looked like he picked up an island on that draw step. Like you, however, Patrick, I do agree. I think it will be simply too difficult because of the power of Reflector Mage. Here is an attack with all the creatures, Mutavault included. Mutavault will be a 5-5. Five five. You've got Master of the Pearl Trident. As a 4-4, four, four. same thing can be said for Lord of Atlantis and Marrow Regery. Manus Rider is a uniquely challenging card for Merfolk because not only does it fly, but it has Vigilance as well, so Harbinger of the Tides is not an interaction point. Yeah, all the words on Mantis Rider end up mattering quite a bit. Yeah, the game's a damage race where they can't stop flyers and they can affect tapped creatures but not untapped creatures. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's everything. Yep. That's, that's <laughs> Does all the stuff. Yeah, that's that's it. And it's funny, humans, that's really the only red card you'll find in humans. Sometimes you'll see Dire Fleet Devil, Daredevil, excuse me. Sometimes you'll see Kessig Malcontents, but for the most part, that's what your red splash is for, and it is certainly worth it. It is a game-winning card more often than not. As Noble Hierarch's going to jump in front of Mutavolt. Looks like Hoey's going to take 12 and fall down to 5. Doesn't even use the Reflector Mage, oddly enough. I, I think that's just the, that's the ace in the hole. Hold just in up. case anything goes wrong. Just well. in case something weird happens. Is Hoey left with just... Reflector Mage? Because I thought... Yeah, I believe he had a Lieutenant in hand. If he doesn't, it's a lot more complicated. Yeah, I thought I saw a Lieutenant. Well, it's... You can go ahead here... I, I suppose the issue is if you play Reflector Mage and bounce the Silver Gill Adept, let's say, you know about Harbinger of Tides, so he can bounce one ground creature and chump the other and you're short. Well, I guess he may have just drawn the Lieutenant. Okay, okay. I, I, I thought we thought he had it. Apparently he did not. There is Lieutenant. There's your trigger. Put counters on the humans. 
And now he'll attack there for eight in the air, and that'll get the job done. So it's a Tommy top deck, actually, there from Matthew Hoey. That's going to get the job done. As he'll win game number one here over Jonathan Zachik. Humans up a game here over Merfolk. The power of Mantis Rider. It's a damage race. It flies. Haste matters, too. Humans up one. We'll watch game number two and examine those sideboards in just a moment. But first, a few words. We are back. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan here in the booth watching Jonathan Zadchuk, better, no, better known as Nikachu, and a second place at Grand Prix Vancouver a few years ago. He's playing Merfolk, of course. Very, very big Merfolk fan against Matthew Hoey, who is playing humans. We'll start with Nikachu and his four. Relic Regenitus, four to Pry, three Echoing Truth, two Tie Binder Mage, and two Kira. Great Blast Spinner. I like the two Tie Binder Mages. If, if the game is going to be really just a raw race, the Echoing Truths are probably okay, but... Uh, not a whole lot else to bring in. For Matthew Hoey, he's got three Kataki Wars Wage, three Sin Collector, two Dire Fleet Daredevil, two Reclamation Sage, two Is a Static Caster, a Zathard Necromancer, and a copy of Dismember. Uh, right here as well. I, I like the one copy of Dismember, and I, I think the Reclamation Sage are probably above board because tagging Aether Vile uh, and I suppose Spreading Seas as well is so good. Let's talk about the StarCityGames.com week of sale here very quickly, folks, where you, yes, you, can save up to 20% off of what? Select Eternal Singles. Yeah, head over to go.starcitygames.com slash weekly sale and check it out. Make sure to be going back to the website once a week because there's a new uh, category of sales. It starts every Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and uh, for the time being, up to 20% off Select Eternal Singles. I'm getting ready here for that second game. These players will be given that green light here in just a moment. Merfolk can humans doing battle. Vile is where Zetchik will start yet again for Hoey. Does he have a Vial? No, he's got a champion of the Parish off of Unclaimed Territory. Of course, naming humans is that Vile will go up to one, and I in the draw there for Zetchik. You can tell he's a Merfolk enthusiast. Beautiful Vials, beautiful Mutavolts, and it looks as though those unstable islands are actually foil ones. Those are uh, not cheap. Also not cheap. Yeah. Another Vile. Not great in multiples. As we head back over to Hoey. Horizon Canopy, Cavern of Souls. Those are in hand. Cavern of Souls will come down. We'll see what he wants to name. Probably humans. Here's a Kite Sail Freebooter. It'll be two triggers. One for the Freebooter, other one for the Champion of the Parish. Champ will get a counter. Freebooter will take a look at the hand. The Whiff. I see a Lord of Atlantis. I believe a Meryl Regery. A Tidebinder Mage. And there's one that is tricking me here at the moment. The and Trickster. See? Ah! Well, that is why. Yep. I hook, line, and sinker there. That is why. There is Merfolk Trickster. 2 2 flash for Blue Blue. Whenever Merfolk Trickster enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls, it loses all abilities until end of turn. That's why I was getting got. Mm hmm. Hoey, safe to attack here for two with the champion of the parish. So that's exactly what he'll do. Zachek will fall down to 18, and we head back over to Jonathan. Vile going to go up to two. The other one is headed up to one. He'll take a die off his deck. He'll draw a card. Picked up a copy of Dismember, it appears. So 
so much easier to play the game against humans when they don't have vile. Yes. Set aside power level. Their creatures are all so good at instant speed. When they kind of just had to play face up at sorcery speed, just doesn't feel like the same deck. Looks like Zatrik's going to come in here with Mutavolt, it appears. Wants to sneak in a couple of points of damage if he can, and he will. Same story as last game. He doesn't have double blue to cast anything out of his hand, so might as well just get busy with the Mutavolt. Start violent in some lords. Head back over to Matthew Hoey now. A lot of cards in Hoey's hand, but as you mentioned, no vial like last game. A lot easier for humans than they do have a vial. Hoey again winning Cincinnati. Team constructed open there with Andrew Tenjum and Joe Bernal as his teammates. We've seen Hoey have a lot of success over the years here on the SCG Tour, notably in Legacy with the card Stoneforge Mystic. Mm -hmm. Human again here with the Cavern of Souls. And we'll see a copy of Thalia's Lieutenant. Placed on the stack. If that does resolve, there will be a couple of triggers here. One for the champion of the parish, one for Thalia's lieutenant, giving all the other humans plus one plus one. The response appears to be Merful Trickster. It'll tap that, make it lose all its abilities. So it looks like it'll only get one counter as opposed to two. The Thalia's Lieutenant still triggers, mm -hmm. and the characteristic human is not an ability, so you get that, but you don't get the Champion to Parish trigger that uh, happens whenever a uh, human you control enters the battlefield. Tricky indeed. This here is an attack for two in the air. And part of the reason that Hoey had to do this was because he needed to get the Freebooter up to a 2-3 uh, to be able to attack with it uh, because of the threat of the Trickster. Counters and plus one, plus one counters, and... Uh, the stats of a creature, those are not powers. Mm -hmm. So it would remain a 2-3. But if he attacked with it just as a 1-2, Trickster would come down, he would lose flying, and then Zatchik would be able to block. And he'd get to eat it. Ow. Vile's on 3-2. and two. This is exactly where Zatchik wants to be. At this stage, here's what he wants to draw. All spells. Yes. Doesn't want to draw any more Vile's. Additional lands that aren't Mutavaults aren't really going to be particularly helpful. Trickster going to swim on in. And I'm mentioning all this because the concept of uh, abilities is a little complicated mm -hmm. because it's not called out on cards. So, Meryl Regery is going to come down. Going to make Trickster a little bit bigger. And it looks like it's just going to be three. Oh, the Trickster deals. And we're going to head back over to Hoey. Hoey will untap. He's got that 3-3 champion, 1-1 one, one Thalia's Lieutenant, and a 2-3 Kitesail Freebooter. And as you mentioned earlier, this is where the ground starts to get really bad for Hoey. Zatchik files in another Lord. He's got a Mutavault available to block. We got another Cavern. We'll see what that one's naming. He's named humans with everything else thus far. He'll go with Angel this time. A little bit of a giveaway that he is playing Restoration Angel here this weekend. And this but is Champion of the Parish. Two triggers, one for the other champion, one for the lieutenant. Go ahead, partner. Zatchik's deck could easily be playing counter spells, so he's got to give away that information to make sure that the Restoration Angel's uncounterable should it come up. This will be a Zathra Necromancer. If this resolves, there will be three triggers. Zatchek will take a look at the Necromancer. We can do the same. Generally used for removal heavy matchups. Not bad in the mirror either. And you'll get a response to the Necromancer. It's a, it'll be a dismember there from Zatchek on the largest champion of the parish on the battlefield. When Zathra Necromancer or another human creature you control dies, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped. Yeah, I am a bit surprised to see it in this matchup. Uh, I suppose Hoey feels like if he can win the battle over Spreading Seas, a lot of the game is going to come down to him cobbling together double blocks, and then Zathra and Echo Answer could be good in those spots, but it is a little bit slow, and Zatchik is not playing all the removal spells in the world, so you, you do not commonly see the card coming in spots like this. That one looks a lot better uh, as a surprise through a vial. Yes. As opposed to hard casting it on turn four like we've seen here. Ooh, 
That much is for sure. It's also really vulnerable to the trickster at instant speed. If you make these blocks trying to, you know, I'm willing to double block because I'm going to get two zombies. It's not the end of the world. And your necromancer loses its abilities. That's bad That's news. That's really bad. That's bad news. You'll see Dai's Lieutenant and Kitesail Freebooter. They're coming into the red zone. 3-3 three, three, Lieutenant. 2-3 Freebooter. But if the thought process here is, I just need to be able to buy myself a little bit of time with these double blocks potentially and all that good stuff, then Necromancer doesn't look so bad. Yeah, if you think it's going to, uh, if you think your game plan, which we basically saw in game one, is win in the air and chump on the ground, Necromancer plays fine in that, that style of game. Lord of Atlantis will come on in through the vial as Zachek will leave his vials on three and two. He'll draw a card. So has that Tide Binder Mage in hand. Against a sea of white and black creatures. Not great. <laughs> Not great, Bob. Zachek, or as he goes online as Nikachu. A lot to think about here. Very seasoned Merfolk player is Zachek. Again, second place at Grand Prix Vancouver a couple of years ago. Do wonder how he feels about his humans matchup. It does seem to be a pretty difficult one. Well, when times get tough, attacking like this doesn't seem so bad. Here comes the Trickster, the Lord of Atlantis, and the Marrow Regery. Mutavolt hanging back. Remember, we saw Mutavolt just get in on the second turn of this game. Yep. So that leads me to believe he's probably drawn some sort of spell, maybe another copy of Dismember. I think that was the draw step. And uh, not a great spot here for Dismember, with Zachek's life total falling as low as it is and the Zathrum Necromancer on the other side. We have blockers, it appears. This is the double blocking that you spoke of. Yeah, I, this is the, the spot where Necromancer is going to be okay in the matchup. Is I can trade off or save myself a little bit, and if you have a trick or, um, you know, it, you just get to a size to kill all my creatures, it's not the end of the world. I at least have some chump blocking the next turn that I get to do. We could have that dismember show up here in just a moment. I agree with you. It would, be, it would be a rough one to cast. I don't think I would dismember anything right here. I think I would just take, just leave the table as it is. You've got to win the fight over the flyer. If you dismember the Zathra Necromancer and don't have a response to the Freebooter, you're dead to all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. Got to order blockers first. Now you can vile. Okay. Going to vile another Lord of Atlantis. Well, it looks like nine damage is going to come through here. Have a couple trades, all that jazz. Zombies. Oh, he's going to untap. He's got that freebooter that's still a 2-3 in the air. Thayu's lieutenant, which is a 3-3 three, three on the ground. And then two 2-2 two, two zombies from the Zathra Necromancer triggers. No. Curious to see if Hoey can cross the finish line here. He knows about the Tyne Biter Mage in Zatchik's hand. He can't put that on the battlefield right now. So he sees a Mutavolt that can block along with the Lord of Atlantis. Keep in mind that Mutavolt, very large. Very, very large Mutavolt. And keep in mind also that Hoey is way dead on the way back if he makes some sort of Alpha Strike here. He's going to have to leave some blockers. Looks like he's going to send in with just two damage in the air via the Freebooter. It looks like Hoey actually does have Restoration Angel in hand, too, so this could be a little bit interesting here. It's really bad news for Zachek here if he goes ahead and 
dismembers this freebooter. He falls to three. And then the Restoration Angel is lethal the next turn. Yeah, that would be bad news for sure. Restoration Angel saving the Freebooter, too, Yeah, which would be a good time. Freebooter not looking great on offense or defense here, but a great time for Freebooter to block. Especially oh if, boy. if Zajic falls to three, then it gets really good. Yep. Because then your Restoration Angel is lethal the next turn. You can afford to chump block with the Freebooter. And here is that Restoration Angel in response to that dismember. It will target the Freebooter. That'll enter the battlefield. That'll also put a counter there on Thalia's Lieutenant. That could end up mattering. There's your trigger. Tidebinder Mage is the card. Hoey knows that one. So Restoration Angel looks great there. Horizon Candle will be, will be the land. Pass the turn back over to Zatchek. He'll untap. Not sure what Zatchek's bash, best draw is here. S spreading seas. You said it. And now you just walk on over. Yep, you said it. But otherwise, Hoey's got enough chump blockers to manage what's on the ground here and a lethal Restoration Angel. Or what appears to be close to a lethal Restoration Angel. Harbinger the Ties would be a good draw. Yes. For just for just remember right. that one actually. Yep. yep. So a couple of good draws here for Zachek. Looks like he's gonna fire up the Mutavault. And oh ooh, interesting. Only a couple of creatures are gonna come in here. The Lords are gonna hang back on D. You got a large Mutavault there. It's gonna be a 2-3-4-4. Four, four. The Trickster also gonna be a 4-4. Four, four. So these are not lethal attackers. Yeah, the the issue is if he attacks with everything, then Thalia's lieutenant is in a position to swallow up one of the Lords of Atlantis. And then the attack looks really bad. You're, you're dead for sure on the way back because then the Thalia's Lieutenant and the Restoration Angel are both lethal attackers. Yep. These are both 4-4s. Four so you're either trading off with the Thalia's Lieutenant or Hoey's chump blocking or double blocking or whatever. But once the Lords of Atlantis get in there, Hoey has such a premium block on the Lord of Atlantis that it doesn't make much sense. Zombies and Thalia's Lieutenant. I see some double blocks here. How are we going to think about some things here before locking this in? It looks like, okay, it is locked in. There are your trades. How are we going to remain at six? Zatchek will pass the turn back. Let's go back over to Matthew Hoey. He'll draw a card. Remember, he's got a rising canopy that he can sacrifice to draw a card with. So he will start there. New card coming for Hoey. He'll play an ancient ziggurat. He picked up another copy of Restoration Angel. Well, there's a lethal attack. Is that going to do it? The answer appears to be no. There is Harbinger of the Tides. Timely top deck there for Zatchik. I'm a little surprised there because I believe Hoey's draw step was a Restoration Angel. It was. I'm surprised he wouldn't cast it to see what the hand is. Okay. Because you don't need the Freebooter either way. That's not involved in the combat. But if you drew Harbinger exactly, you can just say go, and then the next turn... Attack with both Restoration Attack angels. with both Restoration Angels. But now you're down to just the one, and that Restoration Angel might end up having to chump block this turn, and then you have nothing. Then we have some serious trouble. And I think this Restoration Angel probably has to chump block this turn. Yep. You make a very, very good point there, partner. Sometimes you just need to scope out the goods. Yeah. You just need to take a little look. Oh. So what do we have here? It says the Lords are 3-3s, three and he didn't have a Lord of Violin. Well, that's going to take care of it. So Matthew Hoey is going to win game number two here over Jonathan Zachek, which means he will win the match. Humans will take care of Merfolk. Two games to zero. And for Matthew Hoey, he is 2-0 and here in Minneapolis. Uh, deck looked, uh, that's a really impressive win there in game number two, being on the draw, not having Vile versus Vile. Yep. Uh, the Merfolk deck is just a little bit vulnerable in the air, and there are some measures there you have you have your tricksters you have your harbinger of tides you have your tie binder mages but it's hard to get those cards to line up exactly the right way yep. it's it's not it's not like i had this and it answers that cleanly other things have to kind of be materializing for those cards to work effectively couldn't quite cobble together the dismembers were good but with hoey pressuring his life total